Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now, last episode, you know we tackled the first big farmstead for our village. We've already got a small farm there with a little bit of grain growing and a few animal pens, but I wanted to come back and build a more grand farm. So you see here our large farmhouse, which is built out of an array of wood, logs, and cobblestone. And our colossal wheat field, complete with an irrigation system and walls. But what I want to do this episode is add some more buildings that are vital to this farm's operation. The farm produces wheat, which is going to in turn need to be milled into flour for bread. So we're going to be building a water mill on the river at the back there. But we also need a barn to help store all the farm tools. And we're going to need a stables so that all the horses that we have on the farm have a place to live and hang out. So the first thing I wanted to do was build a road from the farm all the way to the river because we're going to be going to the river for the water mill. And what we can do is build the barn and the stables between the river and the farmhouse. Now I had originally thought that I would be building silos and certain other farm buildings. But the truth is, when you look at farms of old, they didn't actually really have silos. They had granaries, so we're going to need to build a granary. And I figure the barn that we have can double up as one. So, using the new dark oak logs and these cobblestone blocks, I started to build this large granary slash farmhouse slash barn. Now, I know most granaries are supposed to be built on stilts, but instead of doing that, what we'll probably do is store the grain on a second floor, maybe a first or second floor, in perhaps barrels or crates. So I went up by about four blocks with the cobblestone, and on the outside added pillars out of dark oak. Then on the next layer, I built up again with the dark oak that was a layer inside the outside layer. But I cut away a lot of the dark oak logs that I'd placed because I thought there were a little bit too many and it made the build feel a little bit cluttered and too busy. I removed a few more of the logs, replaced them with dark oak stairs and I used cobble stairs on the inside to make it look like a bit more like a lock and key effect where the bottom of the barn attaches to the top. And the top level of, a, of the barn is again those same light wood planks to give the perfect contrast between the dark oak logs and the grey cobblestone. Now with the roof, we're doing a traditional peaked roof, much like you might have seen on most of my builds. But I'm trying something a little bit new with this build. You might have noticed that the front and the top of the peaked roof leans out a little bit further. And as you travel down the roof towards the bottom, it slopes back in on itself. And as you travel through the fog here, and through the doom and gloom, and come around, you can see what I mean there. It, the, the, the roof definitely points forward towards the peak. Now the back isn't quite complete, but I'll show you in a second what we've done to finish decorating this barn. Now we're in first person. Oh yeah, doesn't the, sh the, the shaders really kind of bring themselves out when we go back into first person and take a look around the farm on the ground level. Now we've got these lamps there to light up the barn and these cool barrels inside which is where we're going to store all the grain and special kind of farm foods and, and vegetables that we cultivate on the farm. And then we've got these two ladders that travel up to the first floor. Now on the first floor we have a bunch of crates. Now these are sponge blocks in the texture pack but they look like crates for us. And on the top floor, we have a whole bunch of hay so that we can just chuck that at the top of the roof and give it to the horses. Now, as promised, it was time to build the mill. Now, this is where we're going to be carrying all of the wheat that we farm on the farm. It's going to come down here and it's going to get churned into grain. It's going to get like kind of ground up by a giant stone wheel until it's very fine powder and flour. So I used mossy stone brick next to the river because I figure cobblestone near to water is going to have a bit of moss and stuff creeping up it. So I kept that mossy, but had it transition into regular cobblestone as it gets further inland. 
Now I put down these dark oak logs as the framework for our mill. And it makes a kind of a, like a, a, a D shape, I guess, there. But again, the second floor of this mill gets a little bit thinner as you go up. And that's the kind of theme that I'm sticking with for this farm. And I'm using those same light wooden planks for the top of the building while I'm keeping the bottom with cobblestone walls. Now the small bit of the front that leans out from the river, that's going to be the entrance to the mill. And that's one level lower than the rest of the mill. I've already built the peaked roof on that. And now it was time to come up to the top and finish up the peaked roof on the second floor of the water mill. Now there's going to be no window this side of the water mill. But on the other side of the mill, we're going to have a huge water wheel. Now, water wheels are really fun to make in Minecraft. Minecraft isn't friendly towards circles, so making any kind of wheel is a task and a half at the best of times. So I put down some mossy cobblestone down here that again transitions into normal cobblestone. And I leaned out from the mill with these dark wood logs that are going to become the framework for our huge water wheel. And then once I had the spokes of the wheel, it was time to connect the dots with upside down and normal way up, dark oak stairs. Oh yeah, and there you can see that's definitely a wheel shape. I used wooden fence posts as the spokes inside the main log supports, and I made sure to have it two layers thick. There's actually two water wheels there, separated by one thin layer of air. Then it was time to decorate the cobblestone that we have inside the wheel and the floor, the, the flat bit next to the river. And then come up top and lean out a bit more with some of this cobblestone and bring it up onto the bank. I cut out windows on the bottom level and put in some light grey stained glass. And I used cobblestone walls around the bottom of the building just to give it a bit more differentiation. I also used wooden hatches, these trap doors on the side of the windows, as kind of like window shutters. But that's about as far as I was going to go with the water mill for the time being. Now it was time to come over to the stables and start building these bad boys. Now I wanted the stables to comprise of one large barn where we could walk the horses maybe a bit and maybe kind of just, you know, do things with them in a large area that was still inside if it was raining. And that's what this big thing is on the right. It's kind of a large indoor barn. So I used dark oak logs for the framework of that. And again, like all the buildings on the farm, it gets thinner at the top and has a dark oak plank peaked roof. But with the mill and the stables, I didn't want to repeat the idea of leaning forwards with the roof. I didn't want a pointy front at the, uh, at the front of the peaked roof. I just kept it flat. Then I came around to this big L shape, and what this is basically going to be is I'm going to put a peaked roof on it, as you can see me doing here. But I'm also going to cut out most of the front of this, most of the front of the walls, and put down some large open area, because this is going to be the actual stables. These are going to be the small crofts where the horses actually hang out and maybe go to sleep. And again, I'm using the same kind of wood, because if I changed wood on the farm, it would look a little bit different. So I've kept with the same color wood for all of these peaked roofs. So now it was time to design the actual stalls themselves for the stables. I used dark wooden logs to separate the different stalls. And I used a lot of wooden fences to act as walls between the different stalls. So the horses can see each other, so if they want to have a chat with their pals, they can say, Ah, how's it going? Because that's probably how a horse might talk. But accidentally, the last horse is a donkey, but that's fine, because farms need donkeys too. I put down a bit of gravel as well, and some hay in the final stall on the right, just so that we have something on hand to feed these guys when they get a bit peckish. Then it was time to build on the entrance to the main barn and connect it to this road, which is patchy cobblestone and gravel. And of course, build, just like the battle camp, a well 
outside the front of the horses because horses are thirsty beasts. They're gonna need lots of water, so we have a nice big well so that we can bucket out all the water we need to feed up our horses and keep them well hydrated. Then it was time to add a few lamp posts with glowstone blocks as lighting. Oh yeah, and we're pretty much almost complete with the farm. There's a few extra things I wanna add, which I'll probably add between sessions. But as you can see here, I've put down some wall around a large, a large paddock at the front of the farm and it's full of horses. That's a massive field full of horses. We've got the water mill with the water wheel, we've got the stables, and we've got the farmhouse barn here, right next to the wheat field. And I'm pretty impressed with how this farmstead has turned out. I'm really happy that a farmer would come down here and say, hey, this is a really cool place to live. So that's been it for Let's Build a Farmstead. It's been a two-part episode, and next episode we'll either go back to the forest to flesh it out in there, or we'll try and connect the evil fortress to the kingdom a bit, a bit more and flesh out that road. But I've been Stjint and this has been Let's Build. Hit like and favorite and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. So take care.